Hi, Tina. Welcome to the Happy Healthy Caregiver Podcast. Thank you. I am so happy to be here. Thank you for letting me be here. <laughs> yes, I'm delighted to have this conversation with you and to introduce the Happy Healthy Caregiver community to everything that you have to offer and, of course, shine a spotlight on your caregiving story. We always do kick off the episodes, though, with some words of encouragement or wisdom from this homemade Happy Healthy Caregiver jar, but I do have the PDFs of the inserts and then also a refill pack available on the website, and we'll link to that in the show notes, but let's get you some something good here, Tina. What are your thoughts on this? It says, to get through the hardest journey, we need take only one step at a time, but we must keep on stepping. And that's a Chinese bro- proverb. So it says, to get through the hardest journey, we need take only one step at a time, but we must keep on stepping. What does that well, make you think about? That makes me think about when you're overwhelmed because sometimes caregiving happens very quickly. And when you're not prepared, you don't know what to do. So I think the first step would be patient Mm. because when you're overwhelmed and you're stressed out and freaking out, everything goes wrong. So if you take one step at a time and start with patience, everything just kind of smooths on out. That's good. That's good advice. It does happen fast. I used to say it was like a spiral. It just would start to spiraling and you just want to like um, hit the pause button. And, you know, it's there's, it's good that there's resources like yours and, and other folks and happy, healthy caregivers out there to kind of help people figure out what those steps look like. Um, so I'm excited to kind of unpack your story and, and get into it. So you cared for both of your parents and an uncle. Share about some of the lessons and the tips that you personally extracted from your personal caregiving story. Well, unfortunately, my time as a caregiver started at age 10. Oh, wow. And and my mother um, started having massive liver problems and eventually passed away from liver cancer. But I was always in the doctor's office, always in a hospital doing something. And how I started was I became a candy striper. After a candy striper, then I said, you know, this is what I want to do. So I went and got my medical degree in administration because I like more paperwork and dealing with the office type thing. And ended up working in a hospital, and I went through utilization review, infection control, quality assurance. I mean, I worked in every department, and it just wasn't in my heart. And Mm. while I was taking care of my mom, because, I mean, her journey started at age 10, and through the years, my father, he was a seaman, so he was never home. So I had to teach myself how to cook, how to clean, how to do everything. And then when I became the candy striper, I said, this is where I want to go. Well, after I finished with the hospital, I was hired by a home health agency. And I said, this is it. This is what I want to do. Well, in the process, my uncle hardening of the arteries, my father-in-law with Alzheimer's. So I was always having the family dynamics in the background. And that's when I said, you know, this is what I want to do. So in 2000, I had endometriosis really bad. And Mm. they told me I'd never conceive a child. So in 2000, well, 1999, I was doing administration work. I was doing payroll. And they said, you're pregnant. And I said, I can't get pregnant. And they said, I promise you, you're pregnant. So my whole world changed. And I said, well, if I'm going to be the ultimate caregiver, I have to get this right. So I started a company called Independent Living Services. And with 26 wonderful employees from... New Orleans, Louisiana, all the way to Destin, Florida, 
I serviced. But in 2012, things got a little crazy because the rules and regulations of ACA were so different. New Orleans, you were able to do hands-on care. When you got to Florida, it was hands-on. So the best thing for me to do was to go online and help everybody. So what is, you said ACA, what is that? Um, the Department of Health and Hospitals. Oh, Department of Health and Hospitals. Okay, I'll link to that so that people know what that is. Um, the And then, so a couple of things you said, Tina, thank you for putting that all together. You can see that clearly you've been a lifelong caregiver in so many ways. And you, you know, the experiences you had with your family members could have made you run for the hills and instead you dove in. And, um, one of the things I forgot about, so you said it was like, I was a candy striper, um, for a minute. I don't know if they still have those. Do they still have candy stripers? I'm not sure in this day and age, but I would hope so because it is very rewarding and it helps nurses um, caregivers and, and candy stripers are kind of like the beginning of health care. Yeah. So the candy stripers, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, is they call you candies. I mean, you wear like, I wore like the pink and white striped little mm -hmm. dress. Um, and I was probably, I don't know, eighth grade, I think, when I did it. Um, what I love most about candy striping at a I, at St. Joseph's Hospital in Atlanta is where I worked. <laughs> is I loved getting the flowers and delivering the flowers in the mail to the um, the patients and, you know, helping them open it, tell them what the card read. And I also loved it, wheeling them out when they were getting ready to go home. Like those are some of my, my favorite things about candy striping. What sticks with you, Tina? Well, meeting all the different people um, and learning all the different diagnoses, why they were there. And, and helping them feel more comfortable at ease. Because when you go into a hospital, it's kind of scary. And when you have a person or a young person there, it, it just makes life so much easier. It's true. It's true. It's um, There's a lot, I think, that the different generations can offer each other, you know, and vice versa for a young person to have exposure to older generations and exposure to the hospital system. Um, so interesting. And the other thing that amazed me about what you said is you actually like paperwork. You like the administrative stuff. Um, there's a lot of paperwork that comes with caregiving. So that's good. Yeah. Do you have any good systems you can share with us? Get organized. As long as you are organized, everything is, is, works well. Do you have like, do you like a digital organization or paper? What is, what's your preference? Oh, she's got Unfortunately, it. Unfortunately, the notebook. Um, I've been, I lived in Louisiana. So when Katrina happened, the Hurricane Katrina, I lost so much. And I was in Orlando. I ended up leaving Louisiana and going to Orlando. I had 26 employees. I didn't have no access to a computer. So I wrote clients employees mm -hmm. and that's how I started things and and now there is a good system called Trello that yeah. I do like to use so I that helps Trello. out yeah and, and Trello could be used by caregivers in the home or by business professionals yeah it's a really it's a it's a platform that you can really adapt for anything where you're making lists and organizing lists and moving cards around so I use it for like blog post ideas I use it for my virtual cafe organizations you could use it to plan a party you can use it to we've used it to plan a memorial service um, and then you can attach pictures and images so I love that you brought up Trello because I do use it but I don't think to mention it to people but it's a great way to um, get organized and it has an app that goes along with it if people want access to it. Um, good stuff. Well, so far so good. And then you, I know you call your business the ultimate caregiving expert or that's your, your website. What does it mean for you? Like, what do you, why did you name your business that the ultimate caregiver? Like, and you called yourself that, like, what does that mean to you? Well, 
since I've been caregiving since I was 10, every time I would touch somebody, they would say, oh, wow, you're the ultimate caregiver. <laughs> and it kind of stuck. Matter of fact, I even um, in, uh, trademarked the name and I started making little rings oh. with the ultimate caregiver because I think all caregivers are the ultimate caregivers because it takes a lot of patience and organization to be the caregiver. But that's one of the reasons why I named my business the ultimate caregiving expert is because everything that I've been through, I want to teach other caregivers. And I do have a quick little story. Um, in 2012, when I gave up my business, I had so many clients from Louisiana to Florida. And instead of me just selling the company and handing it to somebody else, I decided to give the caregiver to the client. Well, some clients did not want that. They wanted me. And they wanted me to manage everything. And they said, you know, you need to teach us to be the ultimate caregiver. So that's when the first book came out. I wrote a book called The Ultimate Caregiver, but then I changed it and it's the ultimate compassionate guide to caregiving. And we were going back and forth and I was sending them how to lift, how to use a Hoyer, how to do this, how to do that. And one day a client says, Tina, I'm so tired of you, you know, sending me things back and forth, put it in a book and send it to me when it's done. And that's kind of how it happened. So now my, it was just helping family caregivers, but there's so many other people that need help. So I niched down to help just caregivers because it it takes a village. It so professional really, and family, really. Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody that's pro supporting and providing hands-on care. It sounds like a very practical guide um, that you're offering because of one of the pain points for caregivers, there's there's many, right? There's but the, the four pain points, they need emotional support, they need training and education, they need financial support. Um, and uh, the, what's, I forget the fourth point, because it's, it's escaping me, but it's a, but the main thing that training and education is a big part of it. Like we're learning our, so much is coming at us for the first time and you're learning the names of things and how to use and operate these terms. So we're, we're essentially like trying to be a, you know, a hands-on aid or a, and in some capacities, even some of the duties that a nurse would provide without all that formal education. And it's a lot, right? We don't want to mess it up. We care about our loved ones. Well, and that's one of the reasons why I gave up the company to go online, because in the company, it was brick and mortar, and I was only able to help so many people. And now that I'm online, I go nationwide. I mean, I have clients in Colorado, California. I have clients everywhere. And the biggest problem was it was hard to hire knowledgeable caregivers. Mm. The changing of rules and the lack of services, because when you go into a doctor's office, you have 15 to 20 minutes to say what your problem is and to find a solution. And, and you just can't do that. And congestive heart failure, Alzheimer's, there's so many problems that we need to understand. So caregivers are the backbone to health care. I mean, those are the people that know the family, know the, the health care system, know everything. So for me to help and educate them, that is my passion. Yeah. Well, to yes, to your, they're the glue to a lot of things. They know the history and they're the expert in their loved one, right? Like their loved one's per preferences and the things that are going to make them happy and, and, and annoy them. And all of that stuff is, is so important. Um, I love that we see it, Tina. I hope that the world catches on to what we see that um, the caregivers are really the glue that's in the backbone to, like you said, to of our healthcare system, because the gap between what the healthcare system can actually provide as far as hands-on care and support and what's 
what's going to be coming in the future, it is all on the family caregiver's shoulders to kind of fill that growing gap. And we have not done a fabulous job of arming the caregivers with that in our, the healthcare system is very fragmented and they're trying to kind of piece it all together. And it's not until they connect with a coach or somebody who's been living it, like, you know, you or I, or one or somebody else that they can fast track them to those things because it's time consuming. It's hard. It is. And you want somebody to kind of provide you that, that navigation. Well, and I know Tina, you've, you've had your, your fair share of personal losses through caregiving. And I saw that you wrote a recent Instagram post on your site about um, adjusting to life after caregiving. Like what are some of the tips? It seems to be like a common theme that I'm encountering lately, where a lot of people in my daughterhood support circle have lost a loved one. A lot of my peers, um, maybe it's the age that I'm at right now, but it's just happening more and more where people are losing people that they love. And, and, what advice do you have for them to adjusting to life after caregiving? Well, when you're caregiving, it is such a fast pace and you just, you, you don't have time to think about you. And so when you have a loved one that passes away, now you're all alone. Now you're like, what do I do after caregiving? Well, you have to sit down and write what is going to make me happy. And that's when you figure out, do you want to travel? Do you want to start a new career? Do you want to continue caregiving for other people? And you find that niche and, and that's where you go. And I could help you with that too. Oh, good. You know, you're you're a jack of all, of all trades. You also have an, an online caregiver course that you call the ultimate secrets to caregiving. And we're going to link to that in the show notes, but what kind of secrets are we going to find out through your course and who's the course for? The course is for family caregivers or anyone taking care of someone. The problem is over my 25 plus years, I've come up with a formula and there's eight things that drive you crazy. And if you don't do these things, you're, you're going to be stressed out, but for less stress, if you get, and the course covers plan of care, creating a plan of care, getting the home organized. That is one of the biggest problems I found that if your home is crazy <laughs> and you can't find anything, so there's organizing the home, communicating privacy and respect. This day and age, a lot of people go in and when you don't feel good, you're grumpy and you take it out on the caregiver. But if you can learn how to communicate with grumpiness, your job's set. You're doing a good thing. And then body mechanics. If you hurt yourself lifting the patient or doing anything in caregiving, you're no good no more. And... I will teach you how to pick up the client, how to move around to protect your back. Then there is helping your loved ones get clean. When, Especially when you have Alzheimer's, you don't want to take a bath. You don't want to get clean. You want to stay in your same clothes. And I touch on that. And mm. then medication refusal. A lot of people don't want to take medications because of the side effects and different things. So I teach on that. And then there's home safety. You don't realize the fall risk you have unless you go through it. And that's in there. And the last thing is caregiver burnout. If you can't learn to take care of yourself first and make that cozy little corner and every client that I had, whether it was my family members or a client, the first thing I did was make me a cozy little corner, a nice comfy chair with a good book, you know, some hand lotion, anything to make you feel better. It, it, that takes care of your mental and emotional health. And that's very important in caregiving. Yes. All that is so good. Are the, Is this a video course, Tina? It is. Yes. 
Yes, okay. it's eight modules, and it goes through the whole eight things. Well, I got a lot of respect for you creating a course. I created my first course on the Whole Care Network University, and it's, you know, it's a lot. There's a lot that goes into it, but like you said, we built this expertise up, and you want to find a way to make it scalable and reach other family caregivers so that it can help them, right? And we can do that one-on-one, -on -one, but when you have a, a course that's accessible to people 24 seven, they can watch pieces of it when when they need to um, and, and find the thing that's going to help them, not just for today, but help them prepare for what they're gonna need for tomorrow before it becomes a crisis. So we're, we'll link to that um, on your website, the ultimate caregiving expert.com um, slash forward slash CGSC. So give us a secret though. I want a secret. Like what about, talk about the grumpy person. Like what's a little secret in if somebody's like, oh, I'm dealing with my parent and they are just, I call them an Eeyore, right? Like I'm more of a Tigger personality. And then, but there's a lot of Eeyores out there, right? From Winnie the Pooh. So you were at work, you know, day in, day out, you have to take care of an Eeyore. How do you, what are some of the secrets that you share? Number one is humor. If you can make someone laugh or smile, the whole day is better. Mm. It's, <laughs> and, it's like and, a little game, right? Like, oh, it's just, this is a challenge today. Let me, yeah. It's hard when you don't feel up, feel up to it, and, and but it, it, it does make things move a little bit better. What else were you going to say? Well, I also was going to say is memories. Memories are very happy and if you could touch someone's memory you could definitely make them feel better too mm -hmm. you know yeah. when I was taking care of my father and he was not feeling good all I had to do is talk to him about his when he was a little boy or just different things that happened in the past yeah. And, and, you know, and I, I started recording them with my mom when we would sit down to have coffee and I would just ask her a question. I found that this, my journal is a good question to kind of prompt some of those memories, right? It's a journaling prompt. And the idea, right, was with caregivers in mind to help them prioritize and focus on their own health and happiness and what made them happy and finding joy. But it's a great tool to use with somebody else as well and just asking them a question because sometimes it's hard in the moment right to like sit down you're you're busy doing the tasks and blocking and tackling whatever's coming at you from the day and sometimes it can be hard to think of something to think of something oh. that might spark humor or spark a memory so having something like that on your bedside could be helpful and I love your Absolutely. cozy corner I love the cozy corner idea. I have a cozy corner in my office um, and I, you know, I have a couple cozy corners, frankly, in my, in my, um, house. And one is like a shrine. I call it almost like some of my favorite things, like my mom's perfume that she used to wear that I can sniff things like that. So, um, okay. I need you to share another secret with me, Tina. So I've been in this space since 2015 and I don't pay a lot of anything really. I can't afford to for um, social engagement, but I noticed you have 14,000 followers on Instagram and I want to know how, what's your tip there. What Give, give me the secret. Well, my tip is to constant, well, post at least two, three times a day, but my biggest secret is Pinterest. If you can if you can get your people on Pinterest to follow you on Instagram, you get lots and lots of traffic. And Tailwind helps too. Tailwind will, um, everything what? you post to tailwind.app. I don't know what that is. What is Tailwind? Tailwind is a um, scheduler and mm. it'll schedule Pinterest I think Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. And you can, whatever you post on Pinterest, you can shrink it down to Instagram and post it there too. Yeah, very cool. Well, I post on Pinterest, but I have not really tried to convert my Pinterest folks to Instagram. That's very interesting. I'm going to have to research your secret a little bit. And then I do use a, I don't use Tailwind, but I use a, an app called Buffer. So B-U-F-F-E-R is a post scheduler. So I know there's a couple 
couple different ones out there. Well, thank you for that because I do feel like a lot of us are in this space and I'm like, what is, you know, it's hard to find the caregivers in some way, but you know, once some people have, have figured it out. And so we're stronger together by, by doing that. Um, okay. Other, want to pivot to talking about self-care with you a little bit, Tina. So while you're caregiving, you talked about your special spot, which I would say that that is in a way by you having that interaction with a caregiver that you've met or a family member, you are by saying, let's set up your spot. You're already giving them permission to invest in their health and happiness. So I love that. You're like, not even really having the conversation was like, let's create a spot. We're going to do this. You're going to put all your, your things there, your lotions, your granola bar, your water, you know, whatever it is. Um, do you have a spot in your house like that? Oh, I have a nice lazy boy. Absolutely. With a nice blanket and, but the thing, okay. When you're caregiving, there's two types of reasons you need a self-care corner. Number one, sometimes you walk in and that person that you're taking care of does not even want to look at you. They are mad. They don't want anybody in their house. And then the second one is you need time to get away and get yourself situated. So having a spot, and even if it's a sofa corner, you know, as long as you could throw a blanket on and have and have five minutes to sit in there, that's all you need. Yeah, if I think if people are listening to this and they don't have a spot, that would be a good little um, action that you could take is just to find carve out your spot. I mean, I I have talked to people who are like, oh, my spot is like on the edge of the piano where people can't really find me or um, it, it, it is important, I think, to kind of have this oasis or a place to retreat. And to your point, Tina, sometimes our care recipients need a break from us, which is another reminder of why we don't need to be the person that's always doing the care 24 seven. Variety is the spice of life. And they're tired of hearing what we got to say and our stories. And so let's infuse some, some new blood into the situation um, could, could really be, be good there. Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you say to a caregiver who says, I don't have time for self-care? What is your, what are your script there? If you have to sit there 24 seven, guess what? Put up a chair next to them, put that book up. And that's your quiet time. You always have five minutes for yourself, no matter what the situation is. Because mm-hmm. yes. I've been, I've been to the to the point where I could not leave the client or a family member, and I'd have to sit there. Well, as long as I had to close the closey blanket and and the nice book, I was fine. Yeah. Have you experienced caregiver burnout yourself? Oh, absolutely. What were some um, of the signs for you? Lot of sleep, uh, sleep deprivation, um, not be able to change clothes or, or eat properly and have to hurry up and eat something. So, yes, and it will definitely take a toll on you. If you don't take care of yourself, you are no good for your loved one. Yes. What's, what's next for you? Do you think Tina, like, where do you see yourself taking your caregiving business and how you want to help caregivers? Is there something that's on the horizon? Well, I'm not sure yet. Um, the website does keep me busy. Um, I do do a little virtual assistant on the side to help other people but now I think I've done it all. There's maybe even a, maybe even a podcast. I'm not sure yet. Well, you're very um, willing to try different things. I think that's a, a caregiving trait, frankly, you know, that you um, pivot and figure out what's working and what's not working. And, you know, I've appreciated collaborating with you. I know you did a, a big post in the pandemic of pulling a lot of the experts together and sharing some tips for folks. Um, and if people are having a business, it sounds like you're on top of on top of it. Um, my only thing is I'd love to pay more virtual assistance, but I don't make enough to, to hire out 
people to do that. But it's, um, I have a couple folks. I have someone that helps me with my newsletter, who's amazing and some of my social. And then I have a podcast manager um, that takes it from once you record. But I don't know what I would do without these people because when you're running your own business, like us, Tina, like your, your business development, your marketing, your um, tech support, your everything, like it's, it, you'll never be bored. It takes a village. And that's one of the reasons why I also started my uh, Facebook group for caregivers, because no matter what the situation is, whether it's caregiving or professionally, you know, we could all talk to each other too. Yes. The best advice I think comes from other caregivers, which is why this podcast spotlights people who have actually been family caregivers and maybe evolved into something else. But I do believe that that we're the experts in caregiving. All right, I'm going to put you to the lightning round here, Tina. We're going to we're going to share some prompts from my journal, the Just for You Daily Self Care Journal, and, which is wonderful. Ah, thank you so much. Um, and you know, it's it can be a lot of fun. Some people use it as a five like a five year journal, a multi year journal. Because if I'm being honest, I don't journal every day. You know, some days I'm in the mood, some days I'm not. Um, and I just keep kind of adding and rereading what I wrote before. So it's a fun item that you're leaving behind for someone, a little treasure. So, okay, this one says, and this is just because it's the prompt today, so I'm not picking on you. It says, what's one change, Tina, that you'd like to make to your diet or exercise regime? Ooh, that's a loaded one because I, know. Um, I do have a secret. Um. When you're caregiving, I ended up get, eating lots of junk food and ice cream to self-soothe. And I ended up jumping up to 160. And I had to lose a lot of weight. I ended up getting diabetes too mm. and having to do insulin. So my tip is salads. Uh, if you can pre-make your salad in a jar and have it accessible i think eating good food and getting away from the processed food is number one and sugar oh my goodness number one is sugar you don't realize how bad sugar is i mean i was putting like two tablespoons of sugar in my coffee in the morning you get away from sugar you drop the weight immediately. Yeah, I know. So those are some habits I've had to adopt. I'm, so I'm a stevia person instead of sugar. And you can have more control kind of over the drops of that and an organic one at that. And then um, haven't gone completely sugar-free on that. And then mason jar salad saved my life as a working family caregiver. Um, and the thing about making them in those jars, like you're saying, like they keep, they keep for like five days. I'd make them on Sunday. And the trick for me or the secret, I know we're sharing a lot of secrets. The secret for me was to put the heartier vegetables on the bottom and then mm. layer, you know, then it's the cucumbers, leave some of the skin on the cucumbers and work your way up to the lettuce. Um, and I like multiple kinds of lettuce and spinach in mine. And then I would I like spinach. Yeah. I would keep the dressing up. I wouldn't mix the dressing in it. I'd keep that no. on the side. I wouldn't mix the hard boiled egg. I'd bring that separately and maybe some avocado. And then I'd throw it all together uh, at work. What, what would you add to that? What was, What are some of your salad secrets? My favorite salad is spinach, peppers, like the red, yellow, orange peppers with carrots and tomatoes. And I use a light vinaigrette with balsamic vinegar and olive oil. I, I recently discovered Primal Kitchen dressings. Those are really good. There's a, um, I, I do pay attention to the ingredients. Another person I follow is um, Bobby. It's not Bobby Flay, but Flav City Bobby, I think is his Instagram handle. I'll link to it. But he does all these like videos on Instagram about like healthier versions of things. And then he even has an app called Bobby Approved where you can scan the barcodes on things and he'll tell you if it's Bobby approved or not, but like there's some oils that are in dressings that aren't great. Like, so paying attention to the ingredients has been something. Well, um, as a caregiver, you can keep frozen vegetables like broccoli and corn on the cob and different things, brown rice, uh, rotisserie chicken, 
And that is a lot of things you can do too. Yes. Yes. I did. I buy a rotisserie chicken and I'd cut that sucker in four pieces. That was four, four meals for me. Um, yes, these are all good things. Um, okay. What's, um, well, we kind of touched on that. Let's see. What's the main thing weighing on your mind today, Tina, that you're, that you can share with us a secret you can share with us. What's, what's weighing on your mind that you're currently working on? Hmm. I think after losing all my weight and just keeping my health healthy because health is wealth. And if you're healthy, then everything else and try not to worry about so many things. Just take life one step at a time, minute by minute, because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I think we both have had good, not good examples. That's not the right word, but examples of what happens with lifestyle choices and what unhealthy looks like for our parents. And I know that's not something that I want to um, replicate. There's many things I love about my folks, but that wasn't one of them. Um, and so we need more people in my um, family tree that have lived to a ripe old healthy age and lived well. And that's my goal. Um, let's see. What's a local attraction? So I know you're a Floridian. What's a local attraction that you've never visited, but you want to? The Wolf Sanctuary. There is a Wolf Sanctuary in deep in Florida that uh, sounds pretty interesting. Like wolf as in animals? Wolves? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I yeah. love animals. Yeah, I, I definitely, too. I get that from my mom. She wrote um, about a raccoon family. Like um, I, I haven't talked about her book in a while, but um, yeah, she wrote a, a Wadoodles of Hollow Lake and it was like her first husband died in leukemia and she created a whole story with a raccoon family for young adults, not young adults, young people, um, like a chapter book reader um, to kind of explain some of these hard things in a way that they could digest and understand. So that's where I get a lot of the writing influence and probably some of this caregiving influence too, indirectly. So it's interesting how, how that reproduces ourselves. Well, Tina, what else, is there anything else that you were hoping that we spoke about that we didn't touch on or just some final words and thoughts of things that you want to leave for caregivers and how do people get in touch with you? Well, number one, one of the biggest things that I have found coming out of the pandemic is boredom. When you get into the home and you don't know what to do with your client or your loved one, I actually read, just finished writing a book called Boredom Busters for Caregivers. And it gives you tons and tons of things to do, old movies, music, little different things to do with your loved ones. And you can find that on the ultimate caregiving expert.com slash boredom. And a, if you, go ahead. No, I was gonna say it's a good, those are good tips because it, it is, it is part of those things. Like even as it, I remember feeling that way as a new mom with my kids, like, when I was during the stay at home years, I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to keep us all entertained? You know, me and them, frankly. And if you're finding things for common joy, uh, that can really, what is one of your unique things that you have in your Boredom Busters book? The old movies, you know, a lot of people don't realize what, what unfortunately this day and age, there's not too much in Hollywood coming out that I want to watch. And a lot of the old movies are so much fun to watch. And then when you get into your elderly loved ones, you ask them, what's some of the movies? And you'd be surprised how wonderful you like these movies and music too. Yes. I'm trying to think of one that my mom used to love. Summer something. Summer. Um, oh, it'll come to me probably after we hang up, Tina. Do you have a favorite old movie of the ones that you've watched? I just like the old, like, Gone with the Wind type things. You the know? book is so good, too. It's a big book, but it's probably, it's definitely a five-star read for me. 
Um, well, unfortunately, all my reading is nonfiction today. It is. I'm always wanting to learn something new. Yeah, I weave in a little bit of both. I like both uh, both things. Um, very cool. Well, we'll have to check that out. That's a good tip. And then how do people just learn more about all of the resources that you have available for caregivers, Tina? Well, they could go to theultimatecaregivingexpert.com, but everybody says the name is so long. So I have a piggyback. They could go to caregiverexpert.net. Hmm. And I did that so nobody would say, oh, your name's too long. I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to say. That's why it's so long. Well, I will definitely link to it all in the show notes and all of your social places, too, that, that people can connect to the different things and the tips that you have. And Tina, I just thank you for, you know, being in this space and constantly prioritizing the care of the caregiver uh, in our world. And we definitely always have that in common. And we're a whole lot stronger when we unite and help. We got millions of people to help. I agree. And resources is very, very vital. It is vital. And we can help fast track you there. So thank you for coming on today. Um, I appreciate you. I appreciate you as well. Thank you so much, Elizabeth.